Hello everyone, thanks for joining me here today as we get to talk about one of my favorite subjects, comic books. My name is Jose, I love comic books. I love talking about them, I love sharing them with you. Feel free to follow me on social media if you would like, links are in the description below. I've also posted a link to the Marvel uh, fan page with the plot synopsis of the issue that we are going to cover today. Plot synopsis and character bios. So, we're going to interrupt classic X-Men because X-Men 110 was never put on classic X-Men. So, I never knew this issue existed um, until when I bought the, um, oh, the Epic Collection, uh, the first, uh, Uncanny X-Men Epic Collection. And I was like, I don't remember seeing this. And then I looked through my classic X-Men. And then I was like, oh, I'll be. So they never covered this. Um, so I read it for the first time when I got the, um, like I said, the Epic Collection. So... Um, there's not going to be any exposition. There's not going to be any backup story. This is the actual X-Men 110. Now, Chris Claremont is the writer. However, we do have a guest artist. This Tony DeZuniga. He does the pencils and inks. It looks like Dave Cockrum helps him out a little bit. And, uh, here we go. Archie Goodwin, rest in peace. So, the x sanction. As far as I know, this is the first time the X-Men play baseball. So, um, and the letterer is still not Tom Orzakowski. He makes a brief appearance in the previous issue, but then um, did not. Now, I find it strange that John Byrne didn't do this issue because we all know John Byrne is able to do multiple issues a month. And X-Men during this time was bi-monthly. So he didn't even have to do this every month. So um, I'm just surprised. So he must have had uh, been doing other stuff. I know that he was doing um, Iron Fist. And I know that he was doing um, Marvel Team-Up. So Chris Claremont was also the writer on both of those. So, all right. More of Taggers last day in New York. And in their own unique fashion, the X-Men are doing their best to make sure it's a day to remember. So we got Phoenix, Moira, Wolverine, Nightcrawler's the pitcher, Colossus about to bat, and Banshee here. So swing bada, swing bada, says Wolverine. Come on, Elf, give him your fastball. The Ruski's an easy out. Wolverine, shut up. Peter's been up twice already, and both times he's hit a home run. So, and Cyclops says, with any luck, Kurt, he'll do it again. And Professor X. This kind of is funny because this X Men is this a game or a debate? Play ball, he says. So, and Nightcrawler throws the pitch, and of course, it goes up. So, um, Phoenix says, "Oh, I'm gonna have to use my telekinetic powers." So, sorry, Peter. Last time you nearly broke a windshield. Remember, the windshield of a light plane flying at a thousand feet. And Wolverine's like, quit babbling, Genie. Throw that flaming ball. House rules say I got to tag Petey to make the out. No problem, Wolverine. Catch. And um, Colossus is coming, running in. I'm afraid Tovarish, I think it's to Tovarish, that it will not be a that easy. Tough talk, bub. But if you want to play rough, it's your funeral. And you can see that he turns into his uh, Colossus and... Off he goes, and um, um, he says, perhaps, then again, perhaps not. And Wolverine's like, hey, so um, you were saying, Wolverine, get off me, you big lummox. So, no, my friend, not until you sheathe your claws. This is a game, not war. Game, war, what's the flaming difference? All right, all right, you made your point. I'm backing off, says Wolverine. For now, Petey boy, but now ain't forever, and next time, he thinks. So, keep in mind, during this time, Wolverine is still a bit of a jerk. The Wolverine you know now, 
evolves over time. So, um, and Sacklop says, come on, Wolverine, we're taking a break. What do you want me? What do you want from me, bub? A cheer? You take a break, Summers. I ain't tired, he says. And Phoenix goes, anyone tell you you've got one heck of a chip on your shoulder, old buddy? Not to my face, not twice, says Wolverine. You can't be a loner all your life, Wolvie. And so, Wolverine, here we have his thoughts. I liked being a loner, Jeannie. No hassles, no complications, no grief. I lived my whole life not knowing what love is and not caring either till I met you. And so, Mora looks at the time here and says, Oh dear, will you look at the time? It's almost 4 o'clock. The man from the phone company should be here any minute. Send me some lemonade, will you, Sean? This won't take long. And, uh, um, oh, sorry. Banshee says, that I will, Moira. Hurry back. So here the X-Men are, um, like I said, all sitting down having a break. So, and so here comes the guy from the phone company. But things aren't as they seem. So we get this shady looking uh, telephone repairman. And she, like, um, she, uh, Moira answers and she's like, hello, we've been expecting. Oh, and then uh, she's like, good Lord, his face, she thinks. Something wrong, ma'am? Oh, no, I was just thinking of something else, say. She says, so follow me. I'll show you the main phone junction. And she's like, pull yourself together, woman. You've seen plastic surgery before. The poor man, he must uh, get this reaction a lot. So, um... And she goes, can't understand what's gone wrong. Everything was working fine yesterday. Then, poof, here we are. Then I'll, oh, my God, as he pulls out a gun and um, shoots her. And he says, I'm afraid he can't help you, Dr. McTaggart. And she's like, no, and falls. No one can. And so right on the money, the drug worked as well as the master said it would. By the time Dr. McTaggart recovers consciousness, it'll all be over. Easier if you kill him, but hey, then uh, <laughs> we would run out of character. So, uh, doesn't make sense, though. She's got a worldwide reputation in genetics and biophysics. What's a woman like that doing playing housekeeper to a bunch of kids? Guess that's partly why I'm here. The master has a lot of questions about Xavier and his school for gifted youngsters. I've got to find the answers and fast. No telling when anyone might come looking for the woman. Here's the computer center, he says. So far, so good. Everyone was out playing baseball. I'll leave the monitor screen on. Any of them head this way, I'll know it. System layout is pretty simple. Won't take long to realign the primary uh, programming. And then um, we get someone calling him Warhawk. Lord above my mind. Now, real quick. Warhawk was created by Chris Claremont in, I think, Marvel Premiere 15 or something, maybe 24. Check out the Marvel database um, with questions. She was writing Iron Fist at that time, or, it, or Iron Fist was making, you know, appearances there. And this this was a creation of Claremont's um, and used a few times by him as well, so... I saved you from death, my friend, and made you sane man once more. All I require in return is that you serve me. I will be with you always, Warhawk. Fail me or worse, betray me, and retribution will be swift, agonizing, and final. I understand, curse your nameless, faceless soul, he says. But Sunday I'll be free of you, and then, master, he says in quotations, you'll pay for this, I swear it. So... All right, so the X Men are uh, back on the on the field again, and Jean Grey says I should get up here more often. Living in Greenwich Village, you kind of lose track of things like green grass and fresh air. And Wolverine says, "Hey, Jeannie, you up for some nine ball and a round of brew?" And Cyclops is thinking that's the first Wolverine's never asked for company before. And why, Jean? Hate to spoil your afternoon, Wolverine, but you'll have to take a rain check. The X-Men have a date with the danger room, he says. A workout, Scott. Oh, no, says uh, Nightcrawler. 
What's the matter, leader man? Art, Art taking a day off bother you? And Cyclops responds, think if, think that if you like, Wolverine. Everyone, change into costume. I'll brief you when we're inside. And so, um, you can see here Jean using her telekinetic. Um, I think she's helping Professor Xavier go upstairs. Are you joining the others, Jean? Always the mother hand, eh, Professor? I worry about you losing your combat edge, my dear. Without constant training, even you could become vulnerable to an attack. So. And then Professor remembers how she saved the universe and matched up against Fire Lord. And she thinks how uh, Misty, um, that'd be Misty Knight, uh, who's her roommate. Um, she calls her the cosmic roommate. So Jean doesn't know how if that's funny or not. So she thinks that so much has happened since she first became the Phoenix um, and hasn't been able to sort things out. Um, she laments that every time she tries to talk to someone, she freezes up inside. Um, she's very scared. Um, she never wanted the powers of the Phoenix, yet using it, feels good and she's not sure she can handle it so now comes warhawk here now keep in mind that mora was like oh my god it's he looks terrible it must be his blue skin because she was all like freaked out he looks sort of looks like colossus so um and he calls out xavier and shoots them both um again uh it's it's drugs so they're meant to uh, fall into consciousness, but um, Phoenix is quite powerful, so he shoots her again. And so everyone's back in costume, except Wolverine, who was apparently stayed in costume. Um, so Cyclops uh, meets him in the danger room and says, this will be a basic training run, people, to test both our individual powers and our ability to work as a team. Let's get cracking, she's, he's about to say. But then he's hit with a psychic um, a blast and sees uh, Jean and the professor in pain. Colossus asks if he's all right. And Cyclops says uh, that he was hit with a telepathic link. Upstairs, um, Jean and the professor are being attacked. Suddenly the door is uh, slammed shut and uh, locked so Colossus is gonna try to open it but of course um, it fights back because it's the danger room um, uh, Banshee says that it's not possible that the door hit him with such a huge charge and Cyclops says the safety interlocks were sabotaged and he tells the X-Men scatter because um, these everything now is meant to kill him. So, and uh, Nightcrawl is hit by that. Uh, Storm's gonna rescue him and try to avoid getting hit, and then she's netted. And uh, Colossus throws Wolverine, gonna use his claws to free them. A great shot actually here and I love it when you stick a little bit out of panel so all right so he gets both uh, Storm and Nightcrawler out and uh, Wolverine pushes Cyclops out of the way I love how these two are just always ins insulting each other um, notice that he's got more of a straight and you don't get that uh, later thing more else sort of um in john burns run and then definitely when he gets the brown costume then you've got the the more um how would you say the more traditional um mask so all right cyclops in his own way thanks him i've got to hit the panic button before the computer realizes it missed me that should freeze the main the main program and shut down the danger room weaponry and then he realizes it's not working all the safety circuits have been bypassed the program's still running yells cyclops 
Cyclops comes up with an idea and tells Nightcrawler that outside there's a, a power terminal and he needs it to shut it down. Um, Nightcrawler says he'll try and he says, take Wolverine with you in case there's other people out there. And then Nightcrawler says, I'll try. And then he thinks, I barely survived when I pulled this stunt with Princess Lalandra. Wolverine, they, it's Wolverine small, but way larger than she was. That strain could tear us apart, he says. But they, um, they do it. And this also takes, uh, a bit out of Wolverine. And, uh, they both kind of fall. Storm is doing her best to try to avoid uh, getting stunned, but she's uh, hit by the laser, which stuns her. And then she falls into this coffin uh, type. It's uh, It says here, coffin-sized shell, and she's trapped. And, of course, she's uh, claustrophobic. And then she's trying to make herself saying, I'm not afraid, I'm not afraid, to kind of. And Banshee says, Storm's inside that box. And, of course, they said... She's uh, claustrophobic. Um, and Cyclops is like, it's hard to imagine Storm having a weakness, but... Um, and of course, he's remembering back to when she reacted that way toward the Juggernaut. We have covered that. I do have a playlist. I should have reminded you guys. I have a playlist where I've covered all the adventures so far. I plan to go through every Chris Claremont issue of X-Men, New Mutants, Wolverine, everything, uh, Excalibur, in order. I'm also going to cover X-Factor when the when the time comes. So, um, lots of stuff out there. So, And so he takes um, uh, Cyclops, but... There's uh, like a thing to counteract Sean's uh, sonic scream. And without the sonic scream, he can't fly. I guess they're tied together. And so uh, Banshee falls, but Cyclops manages to hold himself. And so, but it's not over. Here comes this robot. And so um, it was unsuccessful. And he's covered now with some kind of paste that's kind of turning into glue and now he's helpless there he can't he can't move so Wolverine's kind of come to so Wolverine's come to he needs to help save the team but just it's he's overwhelmed by all the circuitries in there so he uh, uses his claws and of course just destroys everything so um from behind me, behind him, behind him, uh, Warhawk hits him. So tells him you don't have you. I wouldn't worry about your friends, midget. You've got troubles enough on your own. So Wolverine is supposed to be smaller. So he's supposed to be like five feet, but people sort of forget that, and they sort of draw him normal. It's very um. Uh, people forget his proportion. He's supposed to be like five feet. Wolverine's supposed to be a short in stature, but uh, so um, the guy here says those claws aren't going to be much use against my weapon, says Warhawk, and he says I recognize the design. It's a fleshed pistol firing rocket powered darts. You got a name, Bub? I like knowing who I'm up against. He says I'm Warhawk, little man. I'm the ultimate soldier. Again, feel free to follow, um, read up on his origin if you'd like to on that Marvel database link that I sent. So, um, And Wolverine says, no kidding, I'm Wolverine, bub. And if either of us has bought himself a whole mess of trouble, it's you. And Wolverine is, of course, just slicing away. Um, even he's going, Lord, he cut that dart in half in midair. Like my namesake, I'm fast I'm mean, and when I get mad, people get hurt, huh? And so he, 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 uh, sorry, I started reading here. He thinks to himself, huh, my clown's bounced off his hide like it was rock or steel. So, um, it looks like they're having a hard time hurting each other. So, 
and so they continue kind of fighting. Um, he's uh, drawing Wolverine similar to how Dave Cockrum was uh, doing Wolverine. So, of course, um, uh, Wolverine goes, shoot, I thought I had him. This time, the creeps moves like lightning. His style's a lot like that Iron Fist character I fought a, week, a few weeks back, back in Iron Fist 15, which we did not cover, but... Wolverine, my orders were to observe you people, to find out what makes you special, and then test you to the furthest limits of your abilities. If I could possibly avoid it, I wasn't going to kill any of you. In your case, though, I think I'll make an exception, so... He's about had it with Wolverine. So, Bub, you can sure try. And so, that bastard door burned me. And now it's starting to glow red hot white. So, and that's because the X-Men were uh, on the other side trying to destroy the door. So, now all the X-Men are out here. And Storm asks Wolverine if he's okay. He says he's Peachy King. Uh, tells him... It tells everybody this is Warhawk, and uh, that's the guy who's trying to kill us. Um, Cyclops says, the day's still young, Warhawk. You're welcome to try again. And Wolverine's like, do us a favor, bub. Say yes. Of course, he's all surprised. He's like, I can't match their power. I'm having a prayer against the five of them. But the master gave me a gas bomb, an aerosol variant on the dark toxin. I'm immune to it, but one whiff and the X-Men will drop like flies. Then we'll see who has the last laugh. And then uh, my belt, the bomb's gone. And, of course, Nightcrawler took it. Um, it looked out of place in your belt. So in a confusion a moment ago, I approached it. I hope you don't mind. And now he hits him. And so he's like, his jaw is as hard as steel. And Colossus says, and leave the villain to me, Nightcrawler. And um, Colossus punches him. So, the police come, they arrest him, then you see the X-Men back in regular clothes. Um, so, uh, Professor X explains to the detective here, he says, well, that about wraps things up, I guess. Just one more thing, Professor, according to the Federal Flyer, Warho Warhawk is supposed to be unstoppable. How'd you and your school kids do it? Luck, Captain Delaney. Why not? I wasn't expecting a straight answer anyway. Be seeing you folks, he says. So, um, Storm says the captain seems upset. And the professor says, I and my school have somewhat notorious reputation, Ororo. Not altogether surprising when you consider what occasionally goes on here. Captain Delaney wants an explanation, and I have yet to give him one he likes. The constant frustration tends to make him somewhat irritable. So... Phoenix, though, thinks that uh, um, they should have been able to take Warhawk down. She calls him a second-rate Colossus, but how easily he took them down. Um, I, shouldn't have st I should have been able to stop him, but I couldn't. When I needed them most, my powers failed me. I don't know why. Professor, I've changed my mind about leaving. I mean, for as long as you'll have me, you've got yourself another X-Men, he says. So Cyclops thinks here, there's more to this than meets the eye. Something in Jean's voice sounds wrong, almost scared. Blast it, woman. I want to help you. Why won't you talk to me? Anyway, he says, any idea where Warhawk came from, Professor, or why he attacked us? Uh, none, Scott. On the surface, he seems to be just another villain who bears the X-Men a grudge. Yet, he was totally shielded against uh, his and uh, Jean Grace. Uh, telepathic mind probes and the pattern of his attack indicates that we face a foe who knows as much about the mansion and its defenses as we do ourselves the fact that Warhawk or whoever sent him knows about us at all is in itself cause for alarm and so I sense great and powerful forces gather around us X-Men and I fear that they may well destroy us before they're through yeah, says Wolverine, and you can see the claws come out, you see the snake. We ain't exactly pushovers, you know, Prof. We've beat some pretty rough customers, and we can do it again. You say someone's out to scrag the X-Men, let them try. They'll find out 
they'll find us ready and waiting for them. So you kind of get like a moment of celebration, but it's not going to be kind of working out when, um, when, uh, you next, uh, meet them. So, uh, next issue, Wolverine gets his wish and maybe wishes he's kept his mouth shut. Vern and Austin return and the X-Men simply disappear. Mind games. It's the greatest show on earth. So again, because this is not classic X-Men. We're just going to end it here. So, X-Men 110 from 1977. Chris Claremont. Uh, some guy I'd never heard of as the artist. So, um, I apologize. I just, I don't remember who did this. So, anyway, like and subscribe. I do thank you for listening. Goodbye. <laughs>